Ladies and gentlemen. You're facing a North Carolina team this week that, that goes very fast and has a lot of weapons and has been prolific on offense at times. Kind of what do you see and what do you have to, to kind of slow down there to, to have a fighting chance? So that's it. So uh, Coach Phil Longo's offensive coordinator does a great job everywhere he's been. He's scored a bunch. Um, and had explosive offenses everywhere he's been. So um, very talented roster. Everybody knows that North Carolina's record from last year is not indicative of their talent. They were coming off two seasons ago where they were one of the elite college football teams. So all the talent's still there, and they're piecing it together. I would even say their 2-3 and three record is not indicative of, of how well they played at times. Um, lost some late games, and then obviously it was a two-point play away from beating Clemson last week. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, they will press the tempo. So they will go fast, which is very common in college football. We can't get blinded by the fact at the end of the day, even though they're a spread tempo offense, they want to run the football. They have uh, the size of offensive linemen that are power five offensive linemen. They are huge up front. Uh, they have different body types than we have right now. So they are going to want to establish the run. Uh, and now they've got a quarterback that they feel good about. That's five games through his freshman season. Uh, that has arm talent. So he has elite arm strength. Uh, at some point in every game, he has thrown it over the secondary's head. So they've been able to establish the run, establish the run, go fast, max protect, and then uh, Howell's had a chance to, to take shots. Uh, even in the first try versus Clemson this past week, uh, they double moved and scored on a touchdown to allow themselves to create momentum early in the game versus Clemson to go up 7-0 on the very first drive. So um, again, to, to your point, we practice against that all of the time. Uh, even today, we went through a fastball period. And Dave and the offense does a phenomenal job of pressing the tempo to make us get lined up quickly, to make us get calls from the sideline, communicate, and execute. Again, offenses go fast so that we can't be in the perfect call and so that we don't get lined up and execute. So we practiced versus the tempo, uh, versus good on good. Uh, and then, of course, even when we were versus the developmental period and the our look squad, um, we make sure that we press the tempo, have multiple players ready, two cards ready, um, and then press the tempo there. So, But uh, at the end of the day, we have to slow it down at some point, make sure that we are fitting the runs correctly, correctly to stop the run, uh, and then hold up, which we've been able to do to hold up when they've been able to take shots even like we were this past week. Run, 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 take shots. And the secondary has done a nice job of holding up in those situations. So we've made people earn their drives. Even though we've got to do a much better job of stopping everyone every series, we've made people earn drives. And then to Coach's point, I just walked in the back. Uh, since the first games, we've done a great job of um, correcting explosives. We still had them. There's still two touchdowns from last week where if we're just playing with the correct leverage um, and in the back end that those are not touchdowns. But since the first game where we did allow explosives versus a Clemson team, we've been able to um, improve that every week and make offenses earn every drive that they've given. Miles Sims actually came in late. How has he done in catching up with what you're trying to do out there and what have you seen from his performance? Yep. So you say late, I, I believe he was actually in by the third series. So uh, that, that was part of our play the players as we go on, on Thursday. Um, he's a freshman, you know, he's a freshman. He was cleared the day before the Clemson game, maybe snuck a couple of snaps in. Um, we went to South Florida and then going into game four, getting past the triple option office, going into game four. Um, again, he's the body type that we're looking for. Um, he has got to improve every single day. He's made huge improvements. He's got to improve in every phase of his life and uh, make sure that he's detailed. But as far as just talent, ability, and then body type, that's exactly what we want him to look like. So he was able to hold up with two shots, I believe. Um, he's got to make sure that he plays clean with his hands and is not grabbing and put, making himself susceptible to a pass interference, which we gave up this past week. But uh, pleased with his development uh, and then uh, He's the type of young man that uh, just gives you so much hope every single week moving forward uh, and, and motivates you to want to keep going. We've, we've got that young man for four more years, for three more years, including four more years, including this season. Uh, and he's got a chance to be a special talent if he continues to improve and make progress like he has from week one uh, to week four, now going into five. Uh, Coach, can you talk about uh, your first year coaching David Curry? Obviously, he's your first year coaching him, but um, what he's meant and what he's meant to the younger guys in, uh, in the linebacker room. Sure, he's, uh, I'd say he's the backbone of, of our room in the linebacker room, uh, and then if not the defense, um, he, he makes coaching easy. You know, if you had a thousand David Curry's, you, <laughs> you would uh, you'd be a pleased coach. Um, 
probably have a lot more hair, a lot less gray hair for the, uh, the guys to get aged in this and seasoned in this profession. Um, he's just a consummate professional, and he's, and he's that way with every phase of his life. He is a, uh, just an unbelievable model of being a Georgia Tech student athlete. I can't speak highly enough of him as a man, you know, and, and I skip past a young man. We've got a bunch of young men on our team. Um, he, he's a man. He's become a man, and he handles himself very well. It's been really cool to see him be productive. Um, I think he's leading the team in tackles and has had a bunch of production as well. Probably leads the linebackers, not probably leads the linebackers in snaps as well. Uh, and then there's just time. There's been so many critical situations in close games where I just don't feel like I can take him off as much as we try to above the line depth chart it and as much as we try to wave people and roll people in and out. Uh, just the calming presence and the confidence presence and the experience presence he has to be the Mike linebacker, which is the emotional leader, the communication leader on the field, and kind of the heart and soul of the defense. Uh, that would be the way that I would describe him. He's fearless. Uh, he does not care who we play. Uh, and then at the end of the day, he is a great teammate. He takes care of his business. And then when somebody does that, uh, then they can start being a great teammate and take care of their teammates as well and bring them with him, which is something that we even put more on him that he's got to improve at. He does his job, makes sure he brings his teammates with him and holds them to a high standard that he lives by. But very pleased with his production and uh, just can't speak highly enough of him as a young man. He's, he's wonderful to coach. Um, regarding what uh, Mike mentioned about the past, defense numbers are obviously very good. On the other hand, the run defense numbers probably aren't where you want sure. them. Um, is that kind of a reflection, I would imagine, of, of just kind of where the strength of this defense is in the back and what can you do to to kind of get the, the run defense. Sure, we, we've got to stop the run. So, so to your point, Ken, we've got to stop the run. At, um, at times, uh, I'm saying we make people earn drives. We, we have the explosives are down, the explosive runs, the explosive passes. Um, to our credit, the secondary on the max protection, play action, the shots, um, we've been able to minimize those gains. We gave up the first third down of the game for the longest pass. Uh, and then outside of that, we gave up a perimeter screen to number two Isaiah Wright this past week, which was the second most yards. After that, I think the third highest pass was an 11, nine yard hitch on the backside. So we've done a nice job. And then even on the first drive, after they were able to drive down on us, we got into the red zone. We didn't panic. We put the ball down. We continued to play. And Caleb Oliver was able to come away with an interception in the end zone uh, and try to create some momentum for our team. Uh, but. That, to your point, when we find deficiencies, we find things we need to improve, we need to improve stopping the run. So the first period we have today was team run. Uh, it is 20 straight plays of defending the run. Um, and then to the point of um, getting them in negative situations and creating more sacks and being more efficient on third down, we have to create more negative plays early in downs on first and second downs. Although we're not allowing as many explosives, we're not creating negative plays early on downs to get them in second and long behind the sticks, to get them in third down situations where we can create sacks and be more aggressive um, on, on passing downs. So uh, certainly a, um, something that we spent a lot of time on. Part of it we are with scheme, and then most of it is just technique fundamentals, making sure we're gap sound, and then making sure we can move with our defensive line up front uh, to, to create negative plays early on. Say it again. How much of the defense, run defense is being better at point of attack? Uh, a lot of it is. It's, it's a point of attack and then setting edges. So having forced players, making sure you're not allowing the ball to get out. Um, two touchdowns in the red zones were because we didn't have forced players and guys setting edges. But point of attack is the big piece of it. Uh, and allowing those guys to not sit and catch in all of our defenses so they can move and attack um, and get into the backfield. But a big challenge this week with this offensive line to be able to do that, again, Although they're going to go fast, we know they're going to want to establish the run. Uh, so an unbelievably huge point of emphasis for us. Time for a couple more on Rod and Tori. Going back to the linebackers, Charlie Thomas, I think people saw last year that he was a playmaker, mm -hmm. and you moved him in, into linebacker. Mm -hmm. Has he progressed to the point where he can be an every down guy, in other words, against the run and the pass? Yeah, and he is, and he is right now. Um, on offense, you're trying to find your playmakers. How do we get the ball in their hands? On defense, you're trying to find the most disruptive players. Again, for us to get the offense off schedule and behind the chains, we have to have disruptive plays. And I don't think uh, our chaos index isn't as high as I would like it. It's nowhere high as it needs to be. 
But when we've created chaos or when we've created negative plays, Charlie Thomas has been the guy at the point of attack quite often. I think he's, he obviously had the, uh, the safety. Um, I think he leads the team in sacks. He leads the team in forced fumbles right now. I think he leads the team in TFLs, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So just his ability to uh, be disruptive and create negative plays has been huge for us. So yes, to your, to your point, uh, he's an every down linebacker. Um, and then Bruce Jordan Swilling and Jaquez Jackson, other guys are allowing him to play really, really fast when he's in there and backing him up at a high level. But again, just uh, very pleased as far as a disruptive player. And we've got to find more of those um, as we continue to, to develop. Tori, last one. You talk about limiting explosive plays and the progress that you've seen in that. When you cut on the tape, is there something specifically that you can say in game one we didn't do as well as we did this past weekend as far as Maybe it's scheme, maybe it's coverage, or maybe it's just maybe one specific player who's making yeah. that. So it's scheme, and then we talk a bunch about leverage, which is just a football parlance term. But to every single defense, there has to be width to the defense. So there has to be someone to set an edge on every run. And then even in our pass coverage, we talk about leverage being a big piece. So the 90-yard run that we gave up to Travis Etienne, we had two players that should have had the correct leverage. That they should have tackled the ball on the left shoulder. He bounced all the way out to the sideline, and we had two players on the wrong side of the ball carrier. So we allowed an explosive run. So those have been the little things that, as we've continued every single week, to have a chance to get real downs and real experience in a defense. And then just having so many young players out there playing, they've went through those tough tests, and they've made those mistakes, and they've improved those. Um, again, I mentioned it, even though in the red zone, we had two of those mistakes again. So we come in on a Sunday, and it's tell the truth Sunday. And uh, we're very tough on them in those situations and their accountability, and making sure that we learn from those mistakes that, that they don't happen again. So I don't think it's one individual. Uh, I think it's the way in which we're teaching and the way in which they're responding to the teaching to get them out of those plays. Uh, and then to be quite honest, uh, the secondary has won a bunch of one-on-ones. Uh, they just have. They have, and that's a credit to them. It's a credit to Coach Pop, and specifically out on the edges at corners. We put them in tough situations, um, and, and then they've held up out on the perimeter. When they do that, then that allows us to put more people uh, closer to the line of scrimmage to, to help us stop the run. So we've got to continue to, to do that. Uh, and then, as always, any time as far as huge explosives, the safeties are always your erasers. So they get the ball down. Even when we misfit a gap and we're not perfect, um, and our run fits are perfect in pass coverage. Safeties have to knock and get the ball down. And the Tariq Carpenters, the Wanye Thomases of the world, Christian Campbells of the world have been able to get those down. Another example of that, the very first third and seven, we gave up a big play. We gave up a big play. It was a dig, a shallow, number 18 for Temple, catches the football. He runs up. The post safety actually misses the tackle. Wanye Thomas is 15 yards from where the guy catches the football. He chases him down all the way across the field and gets him down. It wasn't explosive, but because of his effort in erasing the football, three plays later we were able to get the interception in the red zone and live to play another series um, and not allow them just put the ball down and continue to play. So those are racers in the back end as well. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.